Hello. For the demonstration today, I'd like to paint one of my favourite subjects, bantam cockerels. To save a bit of time, I've already sketched out the subject and painted in his wattle and comb. I always say that the cockerels really paint themselves. They're just so colourful and so full of character. They're really just asking to be painted. I'm working today on Bockingford paper. I use Pitt Castell pens, waterproof pens. Very important that they should be waterproof. So I've done the outline. I use the SA Cat's Tongue brush. It's actually called Large Oval Wash, but it is one of my favourite brushes. It's very versatile, hopefully, as you'll see. I'm starting now with lamp black, and I'm going to paint his tail using broad strokes of the brush. I've got quite a dense mixture. I use Winsor & Newton paints, artist quality. There. And I'm going to now introduce some thallo green because they've got green in their plumage. In the black, it's a sort of greeny blue. By turning the cat's tongue brush on its side, you can get a really fine line. There we go. He's really strutting this one. I cheat a bit over their feet. I'm not very good at cockerel's feet, so I usually do some residual grass. It works quite well, no one's ever complained anyway. Keep his plumage. He's got a lovely attitude, this fellow. Can you see I'm turning the brush right on its side now? So you can really get, get into those little corners with it. There. Lovely dense black. He's strutting along, feeling very happy with himself. And down there, he has these sort of saddle feathers. I don't know what they're called. I always paint their comb and their wattle using De La Rone's permanent red. It is just a lovely colour, and I exaggerate the size of their wattle and coxcomb. There's that. Right. You can see how much pigment was on that brush. One thing about using yellow, it is very, very particular. It doesn't like any trace of any other colour. So do make sure your water is very, very clean. I'm using now Oriolin yellow, Winsor & Newton. Quite a light mixture. Just over here. And there. I mix colour on the paper usually. I'm now going to take in some burnt sienna. Which is here. And it's running into his feathers. There. Probably dry a little lighter. Still using the big brush. And here, around here. And then underneath the burnt sienna down here. Most neat, lovely strong colour. And again on his back. Gives almost a Chinese effect. Want to now brush the colour out because his feathers are just quite pale down the bottom. Now we have a touch here of the sallow green on his wing. Their wings dangle down. I don't really know why, but they come down almost to the ground. Makes them look very proud. They're so pleased with themselves. When I first started using watercolour, it's almost the last thing I came to. I started off using oil colours when I was quite young and uh, then went on to acrylics. 
but watercolour I left till last, it frightened me. But I felt that if I used a pen, I could control the colour. It wouldn't go all over the place, it wouldn't go where I didn't want it to go. And uh, I've carried on with that. I use not always a pen these days, but I use one quite a lot. I'm now going to go with a brown on the side of his wing. Down there. Down here, get some movement in that. And his beak, there. His eye, I'm going to have to go for a small brush. I can't get his eye in there. I'm going to use burnt sienna. There. Put a shadow underneath his beak. Can't be without my brush for long. Just a little stronger. Watercolour paints always dry lighter. But again, because a lot of Windsor and Newton paints a single pigment, you can put repeated coats on without getting it muddy. Now, for the finishing touches on this, I'm going to go back in with pen again. But before that can be done, he's got to dry a little. So I'll take a short break, if I may, and allow him to dry. The only disadvantage of using these wonderful pens is the fact that if you put them on any paper that's slightly damp, they just refuse to work. I've got here a medium point and the brush. I use both of them. I'm going to use the medium point at the moment just to tidy up his tail. Not too much. They are feathers after all, and they look feathery, I think. Then I shall use the brush here and do the strokes for his separate feathers. Also on his lovely chest, if I do little Vs randomly, they're going to look like his feathers. to tidy up that line down there I'll use the actual pen and do the lines that come down from his plumage here sort of scribbling really but to give definition to them and again on his tail his saddle feathers as I call them and his wing. And some detail on his legs, scribbling again. I shall define his eye, define his beak, and also on his comb and his wattle, put some lines and a few dots. Now I want to put a catch light in his eye, very important. Makes him come alive. So I'm using white gouache here. And straight out of the tube, you could only need a tiny, tiny bit. And just a little catch, there we are. Little touch on his legs. Colour him off. And there he is finished. Thank you.